Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. It has been quite a while since I uploaded, so what I am back with today is the catch up of my monthly money diaries that I've missed. So the last one that I did was April, so today we're going through my May, June and July money diaries because I've still been doing my no buy, I've still been tracking my expenses. It's been a bit different because we've been locked down because of coronavirus um, for May and June and the first half of July. But yeah, we'll go into the money diaries, we'll talk about them and you will see what it is. So let's start with my May money diary. In the month of May I, I had rollover from April so I opened May with a budget of £460.31. So in May I spent £52.96 on two transactions across books, so I did two Waterstones orders. I spent £34 in my food on the go category, and um, that was I ordered a takeaway for my family. And then I spent £25 on experiences and services, which was the girl that does my nails did um, press on designs that she posted out to your house. It's her way of obviously trying to keep her business going during lockdown when she couldn't be doing nails in person so that was that. That came to a total expenditure of £111.96 so taking that off of the £468.31 that I opened May with, my budget unused at the end of May that travelled over into June was £356.35. So obviously May was a lockdown month so four transactions, two book orders, one takeaway, one experiences and services and I did also spend £201.50 in May on replacements which was actually underwear so I'm not gonna go into too much detail but three bras and three sets of underwear they'd really been needing replaced so I was very glad that I did that and um, I got rid of although I put in three new bras and three new pairs of underwear I got rid of so much more than that so they were genuine replacements and I pretty much have knocked my underwear right down. I feel like it's quite interesting in that my underwear and pyjama door kind of my pyjama door needs some love. I got pyjamas for my birthday that I asked for specifically because I was like I need some decent pyjamas um, and I think it's because in the past Although I was spending so much money, I was always buying exciting things that I wanted that were maybe not practical. Um, and it meant that a lot of the things that I have that probably did really need to replace probably well before I actually replaced them in May, if we're telling the truth. Um, I mean, I am going to really shamefacedly admit that I had a huge hole in like the side of my bra before I threw it out. That's how bad it was. Um, but I, I begrudged that money on those things because they were sensible purchases and not exciting purchases and that's obviously impacted then on this year some of the things that I've had to replace over the last few months um, has been like things have physically fallen apart on me and I probably I feel like because I'm doing my no buy year and I am allowed replacements I am like I'm not easily justifying the replacements because I don't want it to be a way for me to start buying things that I, I don't need. I am waiting until things like have holes in them or fall apart until I replace them or if it's skincare until it's, it's completely done kind of thing. I needed new pyjamas so I got some for my birthday so I didn't actually spend any money replacing them. Spent £200 replacing my underwear and I feel really good about it and I feel like it's something I should have done before I did but it was also quite nice to be able to like that's obviously quite a lot of money for and it, like I've got a really awkward bra size just to overshare I've got a really small back but massive boobs so I, I there is no such thing as a cheap bra in my size and, and if there is it's just gonna fall apart it was quite a lot of money and that that's partly as well probably why I hadn't replaced them before I did when I should have but it was quite nice because I have been on my no buy to be able to say these have fallen apart and they need replaced and be able to replace them without feeling any guilt because I feel like I knew I was overspending and that guilt didn't kick in enough to stop me overspending on things I really wanted but it kicked in on things I needed. It's weird, it makes no logical sense and I suppose the thing is we're talking about like I was addicted to buying stuff and um, but it always had to be new stuff that held excitement and promise so that I could imagine my life was going to be so much better when I owned it whereas like replacing 
a bra and it's just going to be like, yeah, I have a new bra. Like, it's it's not, there's no exciting promise attached to that, if that unless it's, I, I liked buying nice underwear, like, good agent provocateur splurge, here for it, don't begrudge it, buying like, basic everyday t-shirt bras to wear under like, my shirt for work or whatever, don't want to be here for it, didn't want to spend the money. So it was nice, I have to say, to be able to go out, spend, well I didn't go out, I bought them online because we were in lockdown, but to spend that money and not feel that I was begrudging it, just be like, well, I need it, it's not an exciting thing to buy, like I didn't get any joy out of buying it, in terms of like, that moment when I put my card details in or got an order placed email, which to be fair, I've never been huge on online shopping, even in the height of my addiction. I did a lot of online shopping, but online shopping never quite gave me the buzz that in real life shopping did anyway. So maybe I would have felt slightly differently if I'd been buying them in person, I don't know. But yeah, there was no buzz, there was no excitement. I wasn't like pleased to have an excuse to spend money, which is hopefully a good thing. But I also didn't come with a crushing side of being like, oh my god, you just spent £200 and you shouldn't have or you could have used it for something else because I couldn't have used it for anything else because I'm not buying anything else. So it, it was quite a pleasant, although I'm saying it wasn't exciting and there was no like emotion attached to it, it was overall quite a pleasant experience to do those replacements. So yeah, just something to note. So yeah, that that's literally everything I have to report for May. So on to my June money diary. <laughs> Now June, June was not a good month, so there were only two transactions in June. So because of what I carried over, I opened June with a budget of £606.35. and pence. I spent £18.50 on Food on the Go, which was ordering a takeaway, and I spent £56.94 on books. No replacements in June either. My monthly total spend was £75.44. and pence. Nothing much more to say to June other than I was really not in a good place. And online shopping's never done it for me anyway, as I said, but I just wasn't interested in the slightest. So yeah, nothing much more to say about June. On to July. <laughs> July is where it starts to get a bit more interesting because we came out of lockdown. It's a phase to come out of lockdown, um, but we came out of lockdown in terms of shops and things reopening mid-July. I did two lots of replacements in July, I'll talk about them first. On the first of the month I actually spent £10.50, I bought another one of my foot peels, which is this one here, so I used the first one earlier in the year. I didn't replace it immediately because it's not the sort of thing you use, you use it and your feet peel and it's great, it's worth every penny, massively impressed. Um, and you know, and then I use foot cream and whatever so that maintains it for a while and then it really needs just good exfoliation again. So I replaced that on the first of the month with this one which as you can see I have used. I really like that. I'm kind of in two minds about those peels because buying them at 10 50 a time and they're a one use product in terms of a space um, scenario. I buy it, use it, it goes in my empties and once I film my empties it'll go in the bin, you know, eventually once I film my empties but it's less financially good value for money than buying the Body Shop Drops of Youth peel, which is what I was using before, but then because that is better value for money, that product, because it's not a one-use product, sits and takes up space. And I feel like at the moment I just want to have less stuff. So at the moment that's what I would intend to keep replacing would be the peels that are one-use. Once they're used they go, rather than having something that kicks about for ages when I've still got so much other product um, in various other categories. The other thing I replaced on the 20th of the month was my vitamin C serum and I bought the Inky List one the last time, um, if you guys remember, and I totally, I was going to buy, um, I really like the Kiehl's one, that is the one I think I'll probably go back to at some point, but I had intentions of buying the Drunk Elephant one um, because I've been interested in it for a while and I was waiting until I'd finished the other one just so I could try it and then what happened was basically I was standing in boots and they had the vitamin C and I was out of it and I just thought this is convenient and I'm going to pick it up and again I think that's quite a good thing in that I picked what was convenient at the time and 
I wasn't so super excited about trying this expensive drunk elephant serum that I was like, no, I've got an excuse to do this because I need a replacement. Um, so I'm gonna wait and buy that one online or go to Space NK or whatever. Space NK wasn't actually open at that point because the Space NK in Glasgow is in Princess Square, which is like a shopping centre. So only shops that had like an outdoor entrance would open to start with. So that one wasn't actually, I couldn't have gone to Space NK, but I could have ordered it online. I was basically like, the practicality of being stood and being able to just buy it in boots took over and again any kind of excitement that I might have felt about buying the fancy serum didn't outweigh that so I think that was quite a, a good thing because I feel like that's I feel like the emotion is detaching a little bit there which is a good thing because I had far too much emotion attached to buying things so 25.49 across two replacements in the month of July but then there's quite a lot of transactions in July so I opened July with a budget of £780.91 so I had quite a lot of money to play with. I did two spends on books, one at £72.83 and one at £40 exactly um, so that was £112.83 that I spent on books in the month of July. Food on the go I spent two pounds which I think must have been buying a bottle of juice or something, eleven pounds and sixteen seventy five. So that was three transactions at twenty nine seventy five of food on the go. So again there are three smaller transactions than they have been in the past because my food on the go I should have maybe no it was food on the go because it was takeaway. Um they've been bigger transactions at more substantial value whereas because things have been opening and I've been out and about again I've made more transactions at smaller value but that's when it starts to add up so I feel like food on the go and I'm saying that knowing what I've spent in August as well food on the go is one that I'm going to need to watch because that is that was a really bad habit I was in before starting my no buy budget year and I'd kind of broken it a little bit but I picked that back up really quickly just buying food when it's convenient and not you know being prepared for things so that is something that I don't want to slip back into spending a lot of money on so food on the go is a potential danger area that I'm going to need to watch. To get into socialising which I actually did some of in July because you were able to see people again. I spent £110 across two transactions and then experiences and services were where most of my money went in July so I spent £4 on the 9th but that was paying the down payment for my nail appointment which was on the 26th of the month and was £28 so that was £32 there for my um, basic manicure post lockdown. On the 10th I spent £100 and I sort of debated taking this out of my budget because basically what I did was I donated £100 to the National Theatre and basically I really enjoyed all the National Theatre live um, productions that they put out on YouTube over lockdown and obviously the theatre industry has been hit super super hard. There's never great funding for the creative industries anyway so they were putting up an appeal saying like if you've enjoyed this like please text um, to, to donate money kind of thing. So I donated £100 to the National Theatre and I decided to take it out of my budget because I thought I'm going to count that as though it was my ticket to see the things that I've been watching even though technically for the amount of stuff that I've been watching would have cost me well over a hundred pounds but you know a hundred pounds is how much I donated and I decided I was taking it in my budget and treating it as though it was a ticket price for all the entertainment that I have had access to thanks to the creative industries or lockdown which are underfunded and then the last transaction was on the 20th of the month was £145 which was getting my hair done. So that was £277 in total across four transactions. I'm not going to go on about it because if you watched my, I think it was my February money diary where I'd had my hair done, like I don't know what I'm going to do. I really really like my hairdresser, I really like my salon, I really like the experience of going where I go but it is, it's more money than I really want to be paying. But to be honest everywhere else I'm looking because I've got long hair and that does drive the price up I'm not really finding it anywhere for that much cheaper and I don't really want to go somewhere for the sake of saving like 20 or 30 pounds to then be like I don't like this as much and have to go like with my tail between my legs back to my regular place so I, I'm no further forward 
in terms of what I'm going to do about my hair. I want to spend less money. I also want to keep going to where I go. Those two things that don't don't marry up. I don't know what to do. But yeah, I spent £145 on my hair this month. Or, well, last month in July. So in July, my total expenditure, and this is crazy, is £529.58. Now, yes, £100 of that was the donation. So if I, if I say that technically I didn't need to make that, and I took that out, I would still have spent £429.58. Now, in terms of socialising, we're not going to get into it, but one of those socialising trips cost me a shit ton more money than it should have done because I was supposed to be getting taken out for a drink for my birthday. When I got there, not only did the person that I went out with not even buy me a fucking drink, not even buy me one drink, um, they ordered a steak and a dessert and a side and then when the waiter came they were like we'll just split the bill whilst I sat there with a £15 burger. I've never been so angry in my life and I know there's no point in me going on about it because I didn't speak up at the time. I, to be honest I was so gobsmacked because when this person was ordering their steak they were talking about the fact they hadn't had a good steak since before lockdown because like when you make steak in the house it's just not as good and I said yeah I know like I do I enjoy a steak but you know having to be budget friendly so I'll get the burger. I literally said it at the start of the meal and I'll tell you you know who your real friends are when they actually support what you're doing in your life versus whether they just ignore it because it's not convenient for them and they want to screw you over by splitting a bill at the end. And do you know that way A I was completely gobsmacked when he said we'll just split the bill and I was like excuse me but also like this I have this like fear of because I'm doing this budget year I don't want my friends to be impacted by that and I don't want to be seen as being like not generous and like I think generosity is something I really value in a person my ex was not generous in the slightest and that really, I don't want to get into this, but that really was a huge bugbear because I had to just pay for it. I mean, it wasn't, he wasn't not generous. He was the legit opposite. If we want, if we were going anywhere, I had to pay for it because he didn't want to pay to go anywhere. That relationship cost me a fortune, both in terms of fucking emotional drain it was on me, um, as well as actually the amount of money that I spent being in a relationship with a person who never paid for anything and just let me pay for everything and the thing was I ended up paying for everything because if I didn't we didn't go anywhere and we didn't do anything but I have the hangover from that in my mind when I'm like I don't want to become that person I don't want to be the person that people feel like they can't be like oh do you want to go out for dinner because I'm going to come back and be like oh I'm, I'm on my budget and I can't kind of thing like I don't want to be that person I have a massive fear of being that person through doing this but all of my other friends have been really supportive other than this person. None of my other friends would ever order like a steak as a main course and a dessert and then be like oh we'll just split the bill when I've sat there with one course. Like they just wouldn't do it. You realise who you want in your life and that person is not in my life anymore is really all we'll say. But that was 70 quid that I really shouldn't have spent because I got a £15 burger and a couple of cocktails and he was supposed to be taking me out for my birthday. Didn't even pay for a cocktail. Like, honest to fucking God. I'm not going to go on about it because I should have said it at the time and I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed at the situation but I'm also really annoyed at myself for not speaking up at the time and for letting that, like, fear grip me of being like, oh, but I don't want to be seen to be ungenerous. Like, what even is that? So, yeah, if I took... The hundred pounds off of it and took it down to four two nine, so I would have spent four hundred and thirty basically. If I took the seventy pounds that I shouldn't have spent off of that, that would take me down to three hundred and sixty. I still bought the burger and the cocktails, so my bill should have been about forty pounds. But anyway, the point is, rant aside, that was a really expensive month. That looking at it, I bought a lot of books, but it just doesn't look like like it's eleven transactions. That added up to £530 which bearing in mind it doesn't include me buying anything other than books so this is literally like getting my hair done getting my nails done a little bit of food on the go two meals out 
and buying some books like it just adds up so quickly and it gave me such a fright when I actually was putting the figures in at the end of the month because I was I've obviously because we've been in lockdown had two months where it wasn't really a possibility to spend the way I spent in July and I had the budget for it so I opened July with a budget of £780.91 and I spent £529.58 which meant I had £251.33 to roll over into August so opened August with a budget of £501.33 so it's not been financially detrimental it was also just so easy to spend that money again which was really really scary because every other month before lockdown I'd spent my budget so I wouldn't have had that excess budget to spend 500 and whatever pounds in a month like it just wouldn't have been a possibility there's nothing that I spent I think what really has kind of thrown me is that there's nothing I've spent in July that was like a huge expense because of lockdown so yes I got my hair done but that is what my hair would cost whether it had been done in the last three months or not if, like I'm going to get my hair done in September and I think I'm just going to get the roots done and I'm not getting it cut so it won't cost as much as that but if I was to go in September and get my hair cut and get my whole head dyed again it would cost me £145 like that didn't come out of the fact that I've not been to the hairdresser for three months and that is just what that costs. Going out for dinner, the, the ranty dinner aside, I only went out for dinner twice in that month because the first half of the month we were still in lockdown. I probably would have still spent the same amount of money in an average month over more than two trips. I'll like that's what's really got to me but yeah like there's nothing that I'm looking at in July that is lockdown related as to why I suddenly spent a lot of money it just very easily happened and it's given me a bit of a fright so I'm trying to have a really frugal August but I did have a bit of a holiday in August where I'm allowed to buy things on holiday under the rules of my no buy so it's not felt like a frugal month so far in August spoiler alert for my August money diary I am coming in under budget and it's it's going to be quite a good month but I've still spent quite a lot of money it's been quite a bougie month in terms of both replacements and the fact I was on holiday and bought a few things and I also bought my birthday present to myself this month so I bought it late we'll talk about that in my August money diary but it's just it was just quite eye-opening to go we've just done two months of lockdown and then I've spent all this money in like half a month not even in a month because we were still in lockdown for the first half of July it's quite scary that that happened so easily particularly in that it happened so easily when as I said in terms of the replacements the sort of emotional attachment that I have to spending money or had to spending money seems to be going it wasn't it was a lot of money that was spent that wasn't driven emotionally it wasn't buying stuff it was just it was just spent really easily and it didn't feel at any point like I was spending a lot of money or that I was spending irresponsibly other than that dinner but we're not going to keep going on about it I knew fine well going into this that I wasn't going to do one year and then go back to just doing whatever I liked next year I knew that I knew that I had to make changes and control the way that I was spending and buying but I think the fact that we're in July and I so easily or well we're in August but we were in July which is the seventh month of the year and I so easily spent that amount of money without it feeling like anything was quite scary so that's where I am leaving off with my July money diary So thank you very much for watching this video, thank you for sticking around if you have done even though I had my break and I will speak to you tomorrow because I am uploading a video every single day this week. Um, I've got, obviously because I've taken my break, I've got quite a few empties and quite a few declutters that have happened um, and I have filmed them so there's a video every day this week that is very much about decluttering and empties and things that are moving out of my life which is the direction we want things to be going in and then I'm rounding up all the beauty additions that I've made at the end of the week so that I can do an updated beauty inventory with you not this week but next week so thank you very much for watching this one and please do stick around this week there's lots of content coming your way please do subscribe if you haven't already because I am back properly and I will be back every single Sunday with a new video going forward and yes I appreciate you all very very much bye